of God's family. We gather to worship the world who passed to the creation out of chaos. And our cries of joy, joy in the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to the God who gives us voice. We bring the songs which have echoed in our hearts all week long. There are no outsiders here among us. No one has any special standing or any bragging rights. We have all been brought together by the redeeming love of Jesus. Let us all join together in worship. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together as we sing the hymn, All Hail the Car of Jesus' Name. Challenging times. We know that everything we have comes from you, and we thank you for constantly providing us with food, shelter, money, and all the necessities of this life. Lord, 
We thank you for the many miracles and blessings of the past week. The times when we became anxious and our faith wavered and we remembered that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And you did not. Thank you for protecting us from harm, danger, natural disasters and diseases. We thank you for sparing our lives despite the recent increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. For all the frontline workers, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, security personnel, and supporting persons who constantly put their lives at risk to care for the sick, the suffering, dying, and for keeping law and order. Lord, we give you thanks. Help us, Heavenly Father, to keep trusting in you, knowing that you have assured us to fear not, for you are with us, not to be dismayed, for you are our God, and that you will strengthen, help, heal, heal, and uphold us with your righteous right hand. For all your promises, grace, mercy, and favor, dear Father, we give you thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as 
as well as seen the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end.
again, you can be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted his property to them, to one who gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gave five more. So also the one with the two talents gave two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug the holy ground, in his master's money. After a long time, the master of his servant returned and settled a account with them. The man who had received five times bought his other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five times. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I know that you are a hard man. I will see where you have not sold and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went home and hid your talents in the ground. See here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked lazy servant. So you know that I have harvested what I have not sown and that we have not scattered seed? Well then, you should put my money on the deposit of the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who had the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whosoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw this worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. The words of the Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are able to speak a word to your people in season and out of season. We pray that you will speak to every heart, O Lord God, for your people are listening. And people of God say, Amen. 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 This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you for a short while to reflect with me on our sub theme, using our gifts for the building of the kingdom of God. What is our theme? Using our gifts for the building of the kingdom of God. Now, my brothers and sisters, whether you realize it or not, I want to bring to our attention that we are the kingdom people. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. We are indeed kingdom people. Everyone who repents of his or her sin and invites the Lord Jesus Christ into his or her life becomes a part of the kingdom of God. And so we who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives belong to the kingdom of God. I know that presently as a country, we are in election time. Elections are upon us. And I know there are many people who will probably say, I represent this party. And others will say, I'm part of this party. And while it is 
a very important process in any democratic society. This morning, I am proud to declare to you, my brothers and sisters, that even more important than declaring allegiance to any of these parties, I am proud to declare that I am a member of the body of Christ. I am proud to declare this morning that I am a member in the kingdom of Almighty God. And I can proudly declare that because I know when I say that God says such a thing, that God will do such a thing, that God will do as God said that God will do. We don't have to be embarrassed or wonder, wonder if God is going to change God's mind. If God say yes, yeah, he's yes. Yeah. And if God say no, he's no. We can stand on God's promises. We can be firm when God speaks that that is exactly what God will do. So as kingdom people, we have been given gifts and talents for the use of building God's kingdom here on earth at a time such as this. Our God has bestowed upon us gifts and talents for the elevation of his kingdom in this part of his vineyard. According to Matthew chapter 25, the kingdom of God can be likened to a man who went on a very long journey. Before he went on his journey, however, the man or the master gave unto his servants talents to be invested according to each man's abilities. How were the talents given? According to what? According to each person's abilities. And that's important for us to know. Now, a talent in this context was equal to 600 denarii. And one denarii was the usual day's pay. Hence, one talent would have been the pay for roughly between 15 to 20 years worth of work. Did you get that? Just one, one talent would be worth 15 to 20 years of work. So even that man that received the one talent, he actually received a significant sum. The master gave him that one talent in keeping with his abilities. The master was therefore knowledgeable about their respective abilities. And he gave them talents that were within the abilities of the person to invest. My brothers and sisters, our relationship with God is very similar. Our God in and through the person of Jesus Christ entered this world in human form, spent time with his disciples, delivered his message, and when it was time for him to leave, he said to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And guess what? If I go to prepare a place for you, I will what? I will come again so that where I am, there also you may be. But my brothers and sisters, before he returns, he has left us some gifts. He has left us talents for us to use in the edification of his kingdom until he returns. Our gifts are varied and many, but it is the same spirit who distributes them. There are many different kinds of service, but the same Lord who gives them. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God who is at work. And this is true as seen in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6. To one he has given the message 
a wisdom. Say wisdom. To another he has given a message of knowledge. Say knowledge. To another he has given faith. Come on, let us declare faith. To another he has given a gift of healing. Don't you want to be healed by God? And yet to another he has given the gift of miraculous power. To another he has given prophecy. To another he has given the power of discernment. Not everything is of God and people of God must be able to discern that which is contrary to the spirit of God. You don't need pastor to be able to discern. If you are in connection with God, then your spirit must be able to discern that which is of God and that which is contrary to the spirit of God. To another, he has given the gift of speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the gift of interpretation of tongues. These, my brothers and sisters, are merely some of the gifts. So if you haven't heard your gifts mentioned, no need to worry. These are what a small number of the gifts. But they are to be used for the building up of the kingdom of God. God has called us to carry out different roles and our functions in God's church. Some are called to be apostles, others prophets, some teachers, others workers of miracles. Some are called to carry out a ministry of healing. Whilst others are given a ministry of helping, and still others are given a ministry of giving. You know, there are some people, you know, I have a sponge. You know, there are some people who are carrying their hand tight. <laughs> you don't really want to hear all those kind of people, you know? You have a sponge to get anything from God. But there are some people who have been blessed with the ministry of giving. They know how God has been good to them and they are not afraid to share God's blessing with someone else. There are those who are given the ministry of giving guidance and the list goes on and on. God has given us gifts and talents. They have been given unto us so that we can bring honor and glory unto his name. Somebody give me praise. Are you so happy to be here? He has given us all these gifts and talents so that we can bring honor and glory unto his name. My brothers and sisters, if we don't praise him, then the rocks and the stick and the stones will cry out to God. But the name of the Lord must be praised. Hallelujah. In the same way, the master in the parable of the talents gave his servants those talents to be invested for the enhancement of his estate. So too, our God has given us gifts or talents to edify, exhort, and or to build up his church. Master wanted his servants to make use of his talents. That's the reason he gave it to them in the first place. If he wanted them to simply hide that talent or to bury it away, he could have simply kept it himself. But instead, he wanted his servant to use it and to build on it. So to my brothers and sisters, God has given us gifts and talents. He wants us to use them to bring about the growth of his church. He wants us to use them to bring about growth in his kingdom here on earth. He wants us to use our gifts and talents to bring about unity in his church. For each gift, must be used to bring honor and 
are not dishonored to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. In closing, let us be mindful that in time to come, everyone will be called upon to give a report as to how we have used the gifts or talents that God our Heavenly Father has given unto us. Upon our response, we can be met with one of two responses. For one, if we have invested the talents given unto us for the building up of the kingdom of God, we can expect to hear, well done, the good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful in a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of of Who amongst us would not wish to be recipients of these words? Is there one who would not wish for this such a declaration to be made upon you? I think not. We would all love to hear these words when our time comes, whether it is when it is time for us to leave this world, or when Jesus shall come and put in his appearance to pay his people for his own. It is indeed our heart's desire. Let me back up. Let me not assume anything. I don't know about you, but I know that it is indeed my desire to hear such words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of heaven. How about you? Is this your desire? So like this already desire, you know, two persons. Is this your desire, my brothers and sisters? Yes. Amen. If that is your heart's desire, then do what you have to do. Do as God commands us to do, so that one day, near our far, we don't need to worry whether it's tomorrow or next week or next month or next year or 50 years from now or a thousand years from now. Some people are saying, but from I was a baby, I have been hearing that God is coming back. I know I'm old and it's still not back yet. All you must do is ensure that whether it's tomorrow or next week,
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to live.
forever and ever, through Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen.
We get it. Our redemption. Go into the world and redeem it for Christ's kingdom. The life of Christ is our empowerment. Go into the world and empower it for righteousness. The light of Christ enlightens us. Go into the world and show the way. into your homes, into your workplaces, wherever you may travel, to be his representatives. And now may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, this day and forevermore. Thank you. 